Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. You know, cooking with a Dutch oven is a tradition that's been around literally for centuries and used all over the world. Russia, Asia, South Africa, and North America have, have all had similar concepts based on the same general principle, and that is to be able to heat up your food or a recipe evenly as if with your uh, conventional oven at home, except using an open flame. <laughs> you know, probably the most iconic images of the use of a Dutch oven in North America is from the cowboy cattle drive days when the cook would make stew or chili each day in one. Before that, Dutch ovens were used on the Lewis and Clark expedition. And before that, they were used by colonial settlers back east in their homes. But today, probably the most use that Dutch ovens get is by RVers, campers, and scouts. So what better way to master the skill of cooking with a Dutch oven than to talk with a legitimate professional? Many of our longtime Outdoor Oklahoma fans will remember Luann Waters, and I had the pleasure of working alongside Luann for many years before her retirement, and today she's considered one of the country's leading Dutch oven cooking experts, and she conducts seminars all over the country. Well, recently we caught up with Luann at her home between road trips to tap into that vast knowledge and experience of cooking with Dutch ovens. So why would you even want to do Dutch oven and how did I get involved in Dutch oven? Well, I would cooked in cast iron skillets some, uh, but it wasn't until in about the early 90s that I had a chance to finally learn how to cook in a Dutch oven myself. Uh, it was an outdoor skill, so uh, especially at a lot of the workshops that are done to introduce women to the outdoors or where they can get new skills, I found that they might not want to hunt, they might not want to fish, but they might be interested in learning to cook outdoors so that they had still a part in a camping trip or that sort of thing. So Dutch oven cooking is a way to be able to do this. Literally anything you'd cook in your oven at home, you can do out in a campground and get to be outdoors and enjoying the time together. That's what got me introduced to it. And then especially I found uh, it's a good skill to have with Oklahoma winters and ice storms. When the electricity is off, you've still got a way to feed the family and at least keep them somewhat happy uh, in cold weather when the lights aren't on. I had already been doing seminars and things like that on wild game cooking, and so it was kind of an easy transition to then do that same sort of thing outdoors with a Dutch oven. If your family likes to be outside and cooking with a grill and the charcoal or even a gas grill, why be inside having to do part of the meal when you could be outside with them? You can do your side dishes, the breads, the desserts, all outside in a Dutch oven. It can make food even taste better because the Dutch oven has kind of a, a lip on the inside and when that lid is put in place, all the moisture that's in that food, especially maybe a more inexpensive cut of meat, that if you cooked it in your oven at home would have a tendency to get tough. Cooked outside in a Dutch oven, it'll stay tender, all those juices stay in there and the food will taste even better. And as a small side benefit, you actually get some iron added to your diet that makes, uh, makes you healthier as well. Now some people like, even in their oven at home, to cook in a cast iron skillet for things like cornbread. They won't cook cornbread unless it's cooked in cast iron. So again, you could be able to do that outside in the Dutch oven. Now the whole way that a Dutch oven works is that you can put heat not only under the pot, most people understand that, but coals, be they wood coals or charcoal briquettes, also go on the top of the oven. And then literally it is surrounded by heat because cast iron is such a good uh, conductor of heat that it's like it's sitting in an oven in your kitchen at home. And sometimes I think can even cook better uh, because it is such a good conductor of heat. Well, if you want to get involved in Dutch oven cooking, if you're not already, first thing of course you're going to need is a Dutch oven. We'll talk later about different sizes and styles. But the Dutch oven, and we're talking camp ovens, are also called a woodsman oven that has the three legs and a big lip or a flange on the lid that helps hold the coals in place. Then besides the Dutch oven, other equipment that'll make your job much easier is to have some sort of lid lifter. Because with the lid lifter, and you want one that has a brace of some sort on it, so when you're needing to take the lid off of the oven and it's full of hot coals, 
you can pick this up and not dump coals into the food and not get burned and then be able to set that back in place as you need to. Then this also is used to be able to pick up the entire pot when you're needing to move in. Bales sometimes don't get hot, but it's better to assume that they do and be safe. Then to have a lid stand, as the name would imply, when you're doing your cooking, invariably you're needing to add, to stir, and you need to be able to set the lid down so you've got both hands free. The lid stand gives you some place to set that lid. You want to do that because the underneath side of these lids is almost flat. You don't want to set it on the ground because whatever's on the ground then is going to stick to the hot lid or even a cold lid and then be added back into your food. And you don't want to have those unknown substances added into your food. Now the other thing you can do with a lid stand if you're wanting to uh, grill bacon or uh, make pancakes, turn the lid stand upside down and then when you're cooking, you have the coals in under it, take a lid, turn it upside down, and now you have a griddle that you can do cooking on as well. So your Dutch oven is almost in its own way two cooking utensils instead of just one. Now, tongs to be able to just charcoal, uh, and with backyard cooking, it's really easy to cook using charcoal briquettes. You don't have to have a wood fire. You don't have to build a pit uh, to start a fire and that sort of thing. So literally, right out onto your patio or on a sidewalk area, you can set up and be able to do your cooking. But these coals, uh, when they're hot, you can do the arrangement uh, of the coals on top and underneath the oven so your heat is distributed uh, evenly. Fire gloves are nice to have. I don't actually do my cooking with these on, but clean up afterward much, much easier and much safer. Now, you can buy uh, these in a store and say, oh, I need fire gloves and it's probably gonna have a logo on it, or you can go to your farm supply store and say, I need welder's gloves. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, and you can get maybe different colors if you want. So those are really good uh, when the ovens are hot afterward or your fire pans and any of that sort of thing that you've got protection for your hands. Now, mentioning a fire pan, that's what this is. Now when you buy a new one it's going to look all nice and shiny like this. After it's used a while it's going to look more like this and depending on your background you might call this an oil change pan or a hog pan but it's a galvanized metal pan. This size uh, is listed as an 18 quart. What's nice about this when you're finished cooking you can have all your coals and ash all contained. We'll be able to wet it down, stir it with the tongs, make sure everything's out and then safely be able to dispose of those what had been hot coals. Now the other thing about using a fire pan, and I had learned this from Boy Scout leaders, by using this wherever you happen to be cooking, you're doing what's called leave no trace. So that when you leave, if you're in a campground area, and especially if you'd set this on top of bricks so that it's not actually on the ground, you're not even gonna leave any scorched grass or anything like that behind. And again, you're going to leave an area even better than it was when you perhaps first got there. A natural bristle whisk broom is good to have, especially if something's going to take longer than, say, 45 minutes to cook. You're going to be needing to add additional charcoal briquettes or wood coals. You can actually finally end up with enough ash on top of the lid that it starts to act as an insulator. So you use your whisk broom to get all that excess ash cleaned off and then put fresh hot coals on. Otherwise, the ash, if it's on there thick enough, even though you'd put new coals on, the heat won't get to the oven to be able to continue the cooking. Now, a lot of the cooking I do is directly in the oven, but a lot of people like to also use the Dutch oven literally as an oven, and so they'll put a pie pan or a pan of biscuits or a cake pan inside the oven. It's nice to have some sort of trivet in there so that you've got some air circulation in and around the pan. Now you can buy something like this. You can use the rings from canning jars to have three or four of those in the bottom to be your spacers, and that works well. The main thing that I use this trivet for is that I figured out when I'm needing to melt butter, I can set it on top of this charcoal chimney when I've heat started coals. Now I can put a metal cup or a saucepan on top of that to be able to melt anything that needs to be melted. 
The charcoal chimney, especially when you're using briquettes, I find a lot of people already know about these. They use them with their grill. Great way to start your charcoal. No lighter fluid needed. You uh, basically just need three pages of newspaper or a double and a single loosely wadded up. There's a grill in the bottom or a grate. You put this in the bottom, you can now fill. I usually go three quarters full with charcoal. I find if I fill completely to the top or have it heaping by the time these finally start, the coals down here have already burned longer than I want them to. But you start the newspaper, it lights the charcoal, and in 10 to 15 minutes, you'll have usable coals. Now, outdoor, especially if you're camping somewhere, car camping, leave your newspapers in your vehicle with the windows closed so they don't absorb moisture. It's not the charcoal that won't start, it's that the newspaper will have enough moisture, it'll put out lots of smoke, but not enough heat to start the charcoal. So you might have to use additional sheets of newspaper to finally get the charcoal lit. If you store it inside your vehicle, that's not a problem. So you can light uh, your charcoal. Again, 10 to 15 minutes, you've got usable coals. Charcoal chimney this size, you can usually get uh, for sure enough coals to do two oven, two 12 inch ovens at a time. Uh, and then I'd recommend that you'd start additional coals in case you do need to add heat. So that's basic equipment. Now, if you find that you're doing this a lot, you may want to have individual uh, tote bags, for lack of a better thing to call them, to store your Dutch ovens in, especially if you've only got two or three ovens. It's really nice to be able, when you've got those all clean and, and nicely greased, if you're gonna put them in, the, say, the trunk of a car, you don't want that greased oven rubbing up against something else and getting it greasy, or for it to get dirty from dust and things. So you can get these zipper bags. It's the same material that backpacks are made out of. It's got some padding in the base of it, and then you just set your Dutch oven in, and then can zip it shut and be able to store the ovens. One point along on this line to mention, you see that I've got a spacer between the lid and the oven on this one. You don't want to store lids on Dutch ovens tight because you can get condensation inside the oven. So use paper towel or uh, several folds of, uh, say, a piece of aluminum foil, something that's going to keep the lid slightly ajar so that there can be some air circulation, and that way you won't have a problem with condensation. A friend of mine even takes a charcoal briquette, of course not lit, needless to say, but takes a charcoal briquette wrapped in paper towel and stores that in her ovens, and that'll also absorb odors as well as moisture because she fries fish in her ovens a lot, and that way the next thing doesn't have a fishy smell to it. So good basic equipment, you can get by with other things, but if you see you're gonna do very much cooking and hopefully you'll find you enjoy Dutch ovens so much uh, that you'll want the equipment that's made to use with it, this is a good uh, assortment of things to have to get you started. Now that we know the basics about the equipment that you'll need to cook with a Dutch oven, let's get down to the mechanics of how to do it. The biggest mistake people make when they start cooking in Dutch ovens is they use too much heat. Uh, I used the example at an early workshop that I taught. Up to that point, most of the people in my workshops, because they were at a women's events, were all women. We had Dutch oven cooking at a Leopold Education Project National Conference. And there were a couple of fellows, and I think harkens back maybe to caveman days, fire good, more fire better. These fellows, when we had told them the formula to use on how many briquettes, it went right past them. And I looked over and they had their oven literally balanced on a small, uh, almost a small mountain of coals. And I thought, that's not gonna work. So I went over and set their oven off to the side and started moving coals where they needed to be, took easily two thirds of the amount of coals that they had and said, you don't need these. And you would have thought I was you know, stealing their children or something because they, it's not gonna get done. And I said, trust me, it'll get done. So the formula, and I don't know who figured this out, but bless their hearts for doing it. Most ovens will have a number on the top. That relates to its diameter. You can also figure out how, what the volume of the pot is by doing that. Uh, and usually when you'll buy, it'll mention not only its diameter, but what its volume is. But the number on the top is your clue of how many coals you're gonna need, especially when you're baking. This one's a number 10. If I double that number, I only need 20 pieces of charcoal to get this oven to 350 degrees. 
big portion of anything you're going to be baking is baked at 350 degrees, so it's a great formula to have. Now, most people would think, all right, I'll put tin on top and tin underneath. Heat rises, so that's too much heat underneath. So your formula, you're going to use those 20 pieces of charcoal, but I had always heard this rule or the suggestion of called the rule of three or the three up. So for this 10 inch oven, I'm actually only going to have seven pieces of charcoal underneath and arranged in an even circle so that then when I set that oven over these coals, the heat's evenly spaced. If I pile them all in the middle, that's fine if you're sauteing or browning meat, but baking you want it spread out because again, cast iron's a good conductor of heat, it'll even it out. But if you've got it piled in the middle underneath, it's gonna be burned on the bottom uh, because of too much heat. So we have seven underneath. Now still we need a total of 20, so 13 now are uh, gonna be on top. I usually put mine all around the outer edge first. You usually have room for a couple more and then it's all right to put, say, one on each top, each side of the handle. And then as you might need to lift the lid to check it, you can just scoot those over out of the way when you need to raise the lid. So 20 pieces of charcoal for a 10 inch oven, 24 for a, tw for a 12 inch oven. And then if you need additional coals, uh, as these start to burn down, it's always a good idea to have more heat on top than underneath so that you don't burn the bottom. Now, you're gonna bake biscuits. Biscuits usually go at a higher temperature. Instead of 350, they'll be 400 or 425. Each two briquettes that you add gives you another 25 degrees of temperature. So you'll want more of that on top. So say for that 400 degree, I might only put one or two more underneath and would then put all the rest of the heat added to the top. It's also going to help brown the top of those biscuits really nice as well. And so there's your heat source using briquettes. Now, you don't have to tell your family and friends that you know there's this formula somebody figured out. Let them just be amazed when the food comes out beautifully out of this Dutch oven when you're cooking outside. Uh, and I find a lot of people say that they're better cooks when they're cooking outside than they are even inside. They figure that the atmosphere may be part of it. So that works for that. Now, if you are using wood coals, a couple of different ways that you can tell your temperature. And do know different woods burn either hotter or not as well for cooking. So it might make a nice campfire for you to get to sit around in the evening, but it might not give you good coals to cook with. And usually you're just going to be using the coals. You're not using open flame. The one time you would use open flame if you're just boiling a pot of beans or heating up some stew, that could be put on a tripod, uh, hung over an open flame, but you've got a lot more control if you're cooking in a pan like this uh, and can then adjust your coals as you would need to. But one formula that you can do. Now, when I first learned this, it was just to hold your hand over the coals. Then I learned myself just three years ago, you use the back of your hand. It's actually more sensitive to heat than our palms are. So if you hold your hand, oh, let's say that's about three inches above the pot. If I could stand here and talk to you for six to eight seconds, and it's not gotten hot enough that I feel like I need to jerk my hand away, that would be referred to as a slow oven. It's say 200 to at the most 250 degrees. But if I'm needing to bake and get up into that 350 degree range, then in the four to five second, if I can hold my hand here, but then say by five seconds, I'm ready to move my hand, you're probably at about a 350 degree oven. If I've got coals or especially wood, it's wood coals when you'd be doing this more so, if I put my hand here and in two seconds I'm ready to move it, your, your oven's gonna be at about 400 degrees. And if I go like this but can't keep my hand there at all, you're probably hitting 500 degrees and that's gonna be too hot for you to cook in. So you'd need to remove part of those coals. Now, this is written different places. If you need that information, if you didn't catch it all, they'll have it available at the wildlife department so that you can get that information uh, if you don't remember that formula. But the longer you can hold your hand above that oven, you know that it's not as hot. Now, as Luann pointed out, there is kind of a formula to the briquettes. And since this is a 10 inch oven, I'm going to use a total of 20. I'm gonna put seven 
in the bottom, I'm going to put fewer in the bottom than I do on the top. You know, this is probably one of the easiest recipes that you could ever do. It's a cobbler, peach cobbler dump cake. Uh, it's one of my very favorites. All we do is take two cans of peaches, put them in first. Then a yellow cake mix. that out just a little bit. This is the equivalent of a whole stick of butter. Then I'm going to put my lid on and finish out my formula of briquettes and I'm going to put 13 across the top now. Dutch ovens are no doubt a camping staple, but there's really no need for you to leave it sitting on the shelf in the garage between camping trips. Hopefully we've shown you today just how easy you could have a delicious meal or a special dessert ready for your family tonight, no matter where you live. And check out more episodes in the future with Luann as she shares more tips and her favorite recipes with us. Hey, thanks for joining us today. For more information on Dutch oven cooking, check out our website at wildlifedepartment.com. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma. Now let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah.